Hi everybody, it's Beverly at Bama Blind, and I'm out in the evening for an evening walk with Gretchen, and we're just trying to take advantage of any time we can where there is social distancing and the ability for Gretchen to get out and actually guide me and keep her uh, training up to date. I had a training update with the seeing eye in Morristown, New Jersey. We had a phone hour long lecture seminar and I learned a great deal. I learned a lot about um, just via listening to the phone call um, webinar. Um, I learned a lot about traveling. Gretchen is lying down on this paper stone with her chin down on the paper stone. But anyway, I learned a lot about what the new um, transportation, Department of Transportation laws are pertaining to guide dogs, which are specific for guide dogs. And that as, as of January 11th, 2020, 21. So, what I learned, just in a nutshell, is that any animal that is considered a service animal must be a dog. It is not specific as to what breed the dog must be, but it must be a dog. It can't be a cat. It can't be a lamb. It can't be a rabbit. It must be a dog. And these are for Department of Transportation, particularly airline. Thank you. Oh, pretty. Thank you. And so, um, there are specific laws that pertain to guide dogs on airlines. Forms that you must fill out prior to boarding the airline, 48 hours, prior to boarding an airline. And then what you don't have to do if your ticket is purchased within a 48 hour period. So like, like say you had some bereavement or some family emergency that you know required you to book your ticket uh, less than 48 hours, then there are some waivers with this uh, Department of Transportation Form. I also learned that uh, your veterinarian has to be named with their address and the last date of your dog's rabies shot and maybe perhaps some other shots or diagnoses or whatever, but your veterinarian does not have to sign the form. There are some requirements for electronic signatures and that is a difficulty for people that are visually impaired or blind to complete an electronic signature and send it back. So I'm not really sure how that works. I know if you have a guide dog, you can get in touch with your guide dog school and find out exactly what the national, or this is for US, what the national certification, ADA, and uh, Department of Transportation limitations and benefits are for traveling with a guide dog. Um, I know that you can be asked, what does your dog do for you? It must do a service. So that means that emotional support animals, emotional support dogs, are no longer uh, counted on the Department of Transportation as a certifiable dog that can accompany you at no cost on the airlines. The dog has to do a task for you. It can't just be there to make you feel better or support you. So in my case, this dog here she helps me avoid obstacles 
and she alerts me to obstacles so that when we're crossing streets or like right now I'm sitting on a bench she identified that bench she led me to the bench and she stopped and put her nose on the bench so that allowed me to find a place to sit down and we have just completed a route where she has avoided tables and chairs and light posts and planters and trash cans and signage and any other distractions or obstacles that are in the way. So that's what she does for me. And um, according to what I learned on this updated audio call, which was awesome from the Seeing Eye in Morristown, New Jersey, where I got Gretchen, it is the most up-to-date information that we can receive. Now, our, our school has an advocate. She is a lawyer. She's also a graduate of the Seeing Eye, and we can call her at any time for any legal question or advocacy question that we might have. So I would assume that for any of you who use a guide dog, or are interested in using a guide dog, you can call the school of your choice, the school that you have graduated from, or the school that you might be anticipating in attending, and, and actually ask any of these questions on travel and certifiable um, skills that a dog must have before it is certified as a service animal and I will just get about my business Gretchen and I are out I'm just kind of focusing maybe you can see what I can see which is basically nothing because it's after dark and uh, there's lots of traffic and Gretchen is guiding me very very safely down this sidewalk across many many intersections We've got about four intersections to go and then another three blocks beyond that to where at home. So I will say goodbye for now. Gretchen, you say goodbye, girl. Oh, she's got a new tag. She's got a brand new tag that we had to get for her that I had to order from her. And I will describe it. It is a blue bone. It has white letters on it and it has Gretchen as her name. It's along with her, um, she's got a seeing eye tag, which is a, uh, it's a thing that goes on her choke collar, which identifies her as a seeing eye dog in a 1-800 number and her chip collar number. Then she's got a red heart, which is her uh, rabies tag. And now she's got a blue tag, which is in the shape of a bone. And it's got Gretchen on one side. And then on, the, on the other side, it's got my phone number and our street address. So if she ever should get lost in our neighborhood, um, a neighbor will be able to bring her back to my address, which hopefully won't be two or three houses away. But I got that and added it to her collar. So she has a different jingle to her. It sounds so cute. It almost sounds like a little uh, charm bracelet, but in her case, it's a charm necklace. And uh, I'm enjoying listening to it. I don't think she enjoys it too much, but too bad she's got to wear it. And I will talk to you next time, everyone. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening and rest of your week. And from Gretchen and I, bye-bye.